Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of The Phoenix Phenomenon. My name is Roxanne McCarty-O'Kane and um, this show is all about high, interviewing high profile Australians who have overcome some really incredible challenges in their lives and gone on to not only thrive from the experience but to share their knowledge and expertise with um, with others around them. And with me today, I have Jessica Mecklebean, who's the founder of Kids Yoga Therapy. Hello, Jess. Hey, Roxy, how are you? No, I'm good, thanks. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really great day today. So I really appreciate you um, spending your time with me today. I know you're a very busy lady, so it's really great oh, to have you on. My pleasure, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> All right, so just a little bit of background about Jess. Um, Jess has been a social worker for four and a half years, um, specialising in child safety and foster care. Um, she actually will tell you a lot more detail about her personal journey that, that led her to, to founding Kids Yoga Therapy. Um, but the crux of it is that Jess did notice a gap in the support that was being given to, to children through the existing system and uh, has found her own experiences as a way to revolutionise the way of healing and transforming the minds and lives of children and teens. And she's already had such a big impact on, on so many young lives. So, yeah, you're doing really tremendous work in the community, Jess. So thank you thank for being you. here. Thank you, Roxy. Thanks. Excellent. And I know that there are a lot of people out there um, who do work in, in the industry, but um, I think what makes you unique, Jess, is, is your personal journey and, and what you have been through to, to get to, I guess, even the realisation of, of what you wanted to do and the trajectory that you wanted your career to take. So I'd really love you to share a bit of that with our readers today. And um, yeah, in, in your own words, is always the best way to go. So um, tell, tell us about the journey that you went on to, to get to the point of, of founding Kids Yoga Therapy. Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Uh, so yes, as, um, as you said, so I was in foster care, uh, working as a foster support worker. And uh, this was a job that I absolutely loved. Um, what I loved about it was assisting children um, within the foster care system that have little to no control and power over their own lives. And, um, you know, I took that role very seriously. The decisions that we made really impacted the future of these children. Uh, I really loved helping the families try and support these children. There was a lot of education around trauma with these carers. So I really did love my role. What I was getting frustrated with, though, by the end was that there was constantly placement breakdowns. And what that means is that uh, children are being asked to leave these homes because their behaviours are becoming too much to handle. And it really just never sat well with me. I was always really frustrated about this. And I, I, I really just knew within myself that there was something else that could be done or that I wanted to do. And I suppose with that, I decided to quit my job um, because I just didn't feel like any of the services that we were providing either were having that great impact with the children either. So I decided I needed some clarity and that maybe I needed to go down a different path. So I, yeah, I quit my job and I decided that I was going to move to Italy, live the Italian dream that generally seems to be my thing throughout my life is that <laughs> I travel for clarity. And uh, so that's what I did. And, you know, I packed my bags, I left the country, I had my visa sorted. Uh, but what what did happen for me before I left was, so a few months leading up to it, I started experiencing anxiety and panic attacks. And for me, that was a, it was a really terrifying time for me. And I don't use the word terrifying lightly. I was really afraid to be within my own body. I was afraid to be with my own thoughts. Um, I was afraid that this was now going to be my life. So what it, what it felt like for me was, felt like there was constantly you know, a herd of elephants on my chest, just standing on my chest. So I couldn't breathe properly. Mm -hmm. um, I could not even see properly. So I remember the first day that I experienced it, I, I the, you know, the blurred vision came in and I couldn't see and my whole, my peripherals were out and I thought I was having a heart attack, you know, cause I've never experienced anything like this before. And I really was terrified. And, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really sleep properly. I wasn't, I didn't feel like eating. And all I wanted to do was lie in bed and, and try and sleep because I just wanted to get away from these really scary sensations within my body. Sure. So I did go to the doctor. 
um, you know, a week before I left for Italy. So it was really crunch time, you know, I had to decide what I was going to do. Mm. And of course, you know, she confirmed it wasn't a heart attack. So that's a positive thing. Yeah. But, I, you know, she did, she did just give me medication. And, you know, that, that really goes against my values and what I, what I believe for myself. And, you know, I did get to a point where I was desperate enough to, to have these feelings disappear. So I did take a tablet. And, you know, it just didn't, it didn't suit, it didn't align with, with how I was feeling and my values. And I just knew that it wasn't the right path for me. So I did throw the tablets out. And what I did decide was that if after 30 years I haven't experienced this, then, you know, I just reassured my, or I tried to, that Jess, this doesn't need to be your future. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I committed to daily meditation and yoga and, you know, for me throughout life, I've, I've committed to things and not followed through with things, you know, and it's a bad habit. Mm -hmm. But with this, you know, my, my well-being and my mental health was on the line. So I yeah. really, I committed to it and I made sure that I did it. Sometimes I meditated twice a day. So I started that process. I still left Australia. And so I did end up leaving, uh, went over to Italy and okay. And I can honestly say that within a week and a half, the, the really scary sensations in my body um, were completely gone. Right. And so, sorry, were they, were they still occurring at that stage, but you were just using the meditation and yoga as a way to keep it at bay? Right. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, they was, it was still there, but it started to decrease. You know, I, I started to feel less and less of those um, effects of the anxiety and panic and and everything within my body. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, a week and a half since being overseas and they were completely gone. And then even from that, you know, doing that meditation, my mindset just completely changed even from before having the anxiety and panic as well. So it really was, in hindsight, a really... A beneficial experience and it really has created now my life today so out of that I just realized while I was overseas that maybe living in Italy was not the best suit for me and I guess I really didn't want to come home and be a social worker so you know I was talking with my friend one day in the UK and she just mentioned to me, you know, meditation and yoga has had a great impact on you. What if, you know, can you do that with the children that you want to work with? Mm. And I still want to work with the children that have complex needs and that have experienced trauma. That's always been my passion. Um, so, and as soon as she said that, just this huge excited light bulb went off inside me. And I was up until 3 a.m. that morning, like researching like crazy you know, does Australia do this? Is the research there? Who's saying what? Um, you know, where can I learn? Where are the courses? Where can I book it? So I just went crazy with the research. And it was from that moment that I just knew with my whole heart that this was now the direction I was going to take with these children. Um, so I, you know, I booked my flight home, stopped off in Singapore. I did my course. And then a month later, Kids Yoga Therapy was born and it's been the best journey of my, of my life, of my existence to date. So, yeah, very grateful for the experience. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess, did you ever boil it down? You know, you've, you've had the benefit of hindsight now. Did you ever boil it down to figure out what it was that actually was the trigger for, for that anxiety and, and panic attacks for you? No, you know, I still, I can come up with theories and possibly, you know, one of them is that maybe my body knew that it wasn't the right move to go overseas for a few years, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I suppose because that has everything to do with your subconscious. But what I did learn about that actually was that we are so focused on always trying to find the root cause of things mm. and especially children that I work with quite often we're not going to be out they're not going to be able to verbalize that but that's actually okay so I could never verbalize it but what I did do is I worked with my body which is the most important thing to do when mm. you've got these scary sensations so that really affirmed for me that 
even if sometimes we don't know the root cause, we can still find the solution by working with our body. Yeah. That's really powerful because you do. I mean, I just did it then. I'm like, oh, you know, your mind must have figured it out. I've gone straight here, haven't I? But it's all about, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that's what, we're, that's what we're conditioned to believe. You know, that's what we're taught we need to do. Everything is in our brain. And, and of course, that's, that's understandable because that's where our thoughts occur. But we then don't realise that we actually get more information from our body than we do from our brain. Our mm. brain is processing it, but it's all coming from our body and what our senses are bringing in. So it was a very powerful lesson for me. Yeah, I love that. That's incredible. And now obviously you are, you're on the ground, you're working with children every day now and imparting this, this knowledge and these skills with them. Tell, tell me about the children that you work with, what sort of age range you're, you're engaging with? So I work with children between the ages of four and 18. Uh, so they seem to, I'm working with a lot more at the moment from around seven to 14. That seems to be the common age group. I do have a couple of four-year-olds actually now coming on board and, you know, their needs vary. So I've got, um, you know, I've got children that have experienced trauma. So within the foster care system, I have children that have ADHD. I have children that have Down syndrome. I have children that have got cerebral palsy. I've got children um, that have, um, you know, o OCD. I've got, so the real autism, of course, definitely. So the needs really do vary um, and, and I love the one-on-one -on -one work that I get to do with them. So that's, that's how I do it with my children. Mainly I do it one-on-one. -on -one. I do do groups as well, but that's done mainly through organisations. And just the, you know, I left one client's house yesterday and honestly the absolute joy that was with in me because he was just so engaged and all he wanted to do he was desperate to find something that helped him calm down when mm -hmm. he felt really angry because it's really affecting his world and especially at school so just the yeah it's so hard to explain but I just feel utterly joyful and yeah. privileged to come these children and these families yeah. it's really radiating from you right now it's really beautiful <laughs> so. I had to tell everybody yesterday how much I love my job but it's just so it's so wonderful to be able to help these families where this approach just is not common it just hasn't been you know offered and yeah. parents want different approaches now so I'm um, I love that I get to do that yeah, absolutely. And and I guess that that's another thing too, like more parents are, you know, looking outside of traditional modes of, you know, therapy and care. And there are so many allied services and complementary services that are really, really breaking new ground with these, um, with these young minds. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. really incredible to be part of, I imagine. Yeah, really is. Yeah, it's definitely the way forward. And I'm, I'm so glad that I'm involved on that on that journey and yeah involved in it excellent that's great and so you've shared one case there but I guess have there been any other um I guess standouts for you some some uh children you've worked with where you've really really seen some true transformation I'd love to hear about one of those yeah uh there's there's one girl that always comes to my mind and she's uh she's really special to me I've been lucky enough to work with her for just over a year now and uh, so she's she's very clever on taking on I'm, I'm very careful with the verbal language that I use with children because they are listening and they do take it in and you know there was one day where this young girl uh, I was talk she's in foster care so you know she has little to no control over her life and that's a really um, you know that's where a lot of the trauma is created for these children mm -hmm. so I was really trying to empower her and and her to find that sense of power and control within her own mind and her own body and I was sharing with her a story about how I um I walked over fire and you know she was absolutely amazed you know <laughs> how happened she looked at my feet and she was like whoa they're not even burnt and and you know started this started the the I guess the breakdown of it all that we have the power in our mind to control things even though our world might seem out of control sometimes we still have that power within us as long as we believe in ourselves and then we started to do this activity and 
and I just, I was lost in the moment and I said, oh, I'm not too sure if I'll be able to do that. And she said, Jess, you are really powerful and I am really powerful and that means we can do this together. Oh, and, you know, that's and I, beautiful. <laughs> just like that moment of where she could relate it in a different context, you know, she was still remembering it in a different, uh, you know, that was later on in the session. And, you know, it's those moments that are truly special, really special. Um, and there have been moments where the most hyperactive children that I've ever come across, uh, so they're hyper vigilant because they live in really dysfunctional homes and they have, of course, they've been diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and so it, this one boy, he would spend his time running around the classroom just constantly during our sessions. Mm. And, you know, there was, and then there was a couple of times when I actually, I was able to find what worked for him and actually calm his whole body down. And he was laying down still and mind you, stillness doesn't always mean a calm mind, but it did yeah. for him. Um, and he just, he was still and he was calm and his breathing changed. And so, and you know, that's, it's good for his physical health. It's good for his mental well-being. And it's good to teach, you know, to activate that relaxation response in his body instead of always being in that fight flight mode. So, you know, they're just another few examples of some really special moments when things can just alter in that, in that body or little mind. And, you know, it won't, it, sometimes it doesn't happen straight away, but, you know, there is always something that will work for each child. Mm. Absolutely. And, and I'd love to talk to you more about, um, you know, what, I know each child is individual, independent, very, it's a very subjective, I guess, field that you work in. You have to address each child at a different level and, you know, the different ages, they've all had different backgrounds. Um, but I'd love to talk to you about, I guess, the, some of the common things that you see with how their, their minds uh, function, you know, they're, they're um, sort of tied to perhaps some fears in the past, but they're also, you know, maybe a bit anxious about what their future holds and, and the importance of being able to anchor them, you know, in the moment to be able to process it all. Mm. Yeah. So there tends to be a, a couple of themes, and I think you've you've really you've nailed it there in terms of saying that their past is really with them, and they're anxious about their future. But you know, the thing is with children, they don't know this consciously. They're of doing course. it all subconsciously. Yeah. Most adults um, don't either. So. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So. <laughs> A lot of the a lot of the themes within these children are a sense of it's a sense of overwhelm most of the time. So um, you know, one of the examples that I always give um, because a lot of parents uh, can relate to this is that that explosive behaviour that we see from children with complex needs and so, you know sensory issues and autism and trauma and all of these um, needs. So. There's, there's these explosive behaviours um, and that's, quite, that's a quite common thing. And the thing with these behaviours is that they're, they're seeking, uh, what, sorry, what generally happens after these behaviours is that their body and their mind feels a sense of calm. So mm -hmm. there's all of this built up energy in their body and then there's one trigger and they explode. You know, they'll throw things, swear, kick people, you name it, whatever they'll do. Mm -hmm. But afterwards you'll often find that they're quite calm and that's because they've just eliminated this burst of energy out of their body. And it's that that they're seeking. So these children are often seeking the calm that they don't feel during their day. So mm. they'll seek it any means necessary. And sometimes it's not explosive. Sometimes it's implosive. So um, they'll, they'll direct all of that energy toward them, towards themselves. And that can be just as harmful. You know, that's when we've got harming behaviours or we've got that really inbuilt self-hatred, which a lot of these children can have too. So, um, you know, that's, that's a really common theme is that there's so much energy being built up because they're just trying to make it through their day without getting into trouble, without hurting somebody else, without throwing something, without mm -hmm. yelling at somebody. You know, there's all of these conditions. Um, so they're just trying to make it through. So that's, that's something that I commonly see and then, of course, it's, it's just constant anxiety. You know, it's, it's a word that's thrown around so much. But for these children, when they are receiving all of this sensory input 
and quite often it's not being processed correctly because of the different systems in their body that haven't been developed properly. Um, so they, they're they reading something into what they hear that maybe doesn't mean that and they're reacting over here in a completely different way mm -hmm. and they're getting in trouble for doing it this way because we as adults see it as over here and that's the norm. So they're just, they're just always anxious about what they're going to give out. Um, so that's a common thing. And that, that, that just means that they're constantly in their um, sympathetic nervous system, which is their fight, flight or freeze system. And that's just, it's just a system that's affecting their physical health, which you'll see a lot of the time I see children with, you know, pain in their body. And that's because that's how it's manifesting. Mm. Um, and, you know, their relaxation response is underdeveloped. So that's why yoga and meditation is so perfect for them. Yeah. Excellent. That's great. And um, so I guess another thing I wanted to ask you about is, you know, obviously yoga is, is one of the core um, things that you do engage with, with these young people, but you do, you've mentioned already a few, you know, working through activities and really trying to rewire some different um, segments of the brain so that they can process these things and reduce the overwhelm. So I'd, I'd love to see, um, yeah, maybe some of the, the other ways in which you work with the children to, to overcome these things. Yeah, sure. So I guess from my social worker background, I really try and bring in a lot of that stuff into my sessions as well, depending on what the child needs. Mm -hmm. So I suppose what that looks like is, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of emotional identification work done but it's really done in a way that doesn't require verbal language. So it might be that if I've got a child, um, you know, for example, the little girl that I work with with Down syndrome, we really tried to find either colours or shapes or animals or cartoon characters that she loves and attributes that to an emotion. So we're really trying to steer away from sad, angry um, frustrated, you know, those emotions. We still mm. use them afterwards, but we really need to find something else that they actually can relate to. So a lot of these children can't really relate to those words. Um, mm. So that's one way that I that I try and, uh, yeah, outside of the yoga realm, work with these children. And I guess, you know, the other ways are using language and then incorporating that into their physiology as well so I suppose that is a bit of yoga but we're really trying to bring up the fears that these children might be feeling and instead of the physiology always being in that fear mode where I'm actually guiding them into the relaxation mode while that you know that thought might be there so mm -hmm. that's because once we alter the physiology then we can alter how our brain works um, and then some other ways I guess you know, we really want to alter the internal dialogue for these children as well. So mm -hmm. constantly there's always, um, I guess we call them mantras, but we want to always choose these positive affirmation sentences and often the children will create their own based on what they want to achieve for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, one of the things that I love developing with my children is a, a calm down plan. So there'll be a sheet of paper and, you know, the child will create for themselves five, five activities that they can do that they can turn to whenever they start to feel angry or frustrated or upset. And then what the, what the parents will do is put that up around, you know, their houses everywhere. The teachers will know. So it's really important to work with the school as well mm -hmm. because if the, if the teachers are not implementing the same uh, strategies then there's inconsistency and these children in particular need consistency yeah. um, and then I guess also I work with the parents quite a bit too so you know there's a lot of coaching help there from from me in terms of you know what may be in their environment or the family dynamic or the parent-child dynamic could we alter a little bit to help with you know the changes that we're trying to create for this child mm -hmm. so it's yeah, you're right. It's not always about the yoga for me. That's one of the modalities, but I really try and incorporate the family and it's a holistic approach to make sure it's long-term change and not just, you know, change for that hour that I'm with them. 
Yeah, perfect. Mm. That's great. And I'm glad you provided me a bit of a segue into parents there. Um, obviously, they are an integral part of yeah the success of, of your program and the work that you do mm. with the children. But for those who haven't yet connected with you, um, parents who may be, you know, a bit, uh, maybe looking for answers for their own children, um, would you give them, what sort of advice would you give them to, I guess, maybe assess whether something like kids yoga therapy or, or um, something along those lines would be um, beneficial for their children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So I suppose there's, there's a few things to consider is, you know, the age of your child. Um, so, you know, if you've got a child under the age of seven and they're only receiving talk-based therapy, which just uses our prefrontal cortex, then um, I would question the level of effectiveness of that. So do you have somebody in your child's life that is actually working with the body and the mind connection? Um, and, you know, do do the research yourself if you, if you would like, or definitely contact me if you would like some articles on the research because... You know, it, there's too much out there now to, we know in the neuroscience world um, that the body-brain connection is paramount when we want to heal um, any, any type of uh, illness or mental illness or disability or, or suffering in our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you're constantly, this is one of the things is that you keep, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. Yeah. So... You know, it's a really important thing to realise. So if you are just trying the same thing over and over and you're not seeing anything alter within your child or within your family, then it really is time to try something new. And, and this is not just in your child's world, this is in your world too. So mm -hmm. there really needs to be a different approach um, if, if you're not seeing any changes. And, you know, I think when there's anything to do with a child and sensory information, I mean, again, I just keep coming back to the body because that's just what is so important. So if you don't, if you've got OT support quite often, you know, yoga and OT complement each other really well. If you don't have OT support, then, you know, kids yoga therapy is perfect also. So we're quite aligned in, in what we do with our work. Mm. Um, and then again, if you really want some, cause I go within the homes, and if it really gives me a great insight into the dynamic of, you know, you take your child to an office most of the time yeah. and they don't really see the ins and outs of the family. They don't get that. There's no personal touch there and they don't really get the ins and outs of what it's like to be within your home. Whereas mm -hmm. I do, I have the, the ability to do that. And so, you know, different ideas then will come up for me when I'm in your home and, and there's different level of support. You know, I'm quite happy to sit there and have a cup of tea with you afterwards if you want to debrief about things. And yeah. um, so there just is a different level of support because I do go within the home. And I guess with my social worker background, then I've always got different tricks to be able to guide families to try as well. Um, so I think it's, yeah, if you, if you want to alter behaviours, then it's worth trying because our bodies our bodies will change if we work with it. Absolutely. Excellent. And for those um, who are watching or listening that, you know, may have been drawn to your particular story because of, you know, your, your um, experience with anxiety and panic attacks, I'd love to see what sort of advice, obviously you found yoga and meditation were, were a great um, solution for yourself. Um, what advice would you give to them as, I guess, a first step or a first couple of steps to those who are brand new to those kinds of um, modalities that, of yoga and, and meditation? You know, some people do find it hard to just sit and be, but what sort of, um, what would you recommend as maybe the first couple of steps they can take to implement that in their lives? Yeah, so start simple. So, um, you know, and, and realise too that the way your child learns is by your modelling behaviour. So if you would really love to implement this into your child's life, then, you know, do it as a family activity. That's, and that's just powerful for bonding anyway. And I love family yoga sessions, which I do as well. So start simple. And if the first thought comes to your mind that, well, I'm terrible at meditating, then... I would rebut and say to you that you've got 40, 30, 35, 40 years of a brain 
that has been using this same highway. Okay, so it really is going to take more than one or two sessions to start creating a different highway in your brain to use. Mm -hmm. So really be kind to yourself and realize that every single person says that in the beginning. So it's okay. Um, and so start off simple. And so what that could look like is, you know, a simple a Google, a, a YouTube search on a child's meditation and lay in the bedroom with your child and do it. It could be five minutes mm. and you can, you can find five minutes in your nightly routine. You can. And if it's your priority to start making some changes, you'll actually make time for, for the five minutes of meditation. Um, I would, I would say, you know, if I have four steps of creating a really simple routine, if you're happy for me to go through that, which will yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Um, so, and this can go for as long as an, and as short as you would like. So the first step I always say is create a mantra. So it needs to be a positive statement. I am, I have, I release uh, and, and have the child choose this. So it might be, for example, I am kind to myself and my brother or I am kind to myself and my friends at school, whatever is going on for that child at the moment. So write that down, have them colour it in, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you would choose uh, you would choose a breathing exercise so, you know, if you Google breathing exercises for kids, you're going to find loads anyway. Um, and it's a, it could be as simple as just blowing up your belly like a balloon. Let's pretend that's it. And then you want to choose maybe two to five yoga poses, okay? And then at the end, you want to choose a relaxation activity. So that could be your two minutes of meditation. Mm. So they're, they're the four steps and then you just bring it all together. So each yoga pose you do, you're reminding the child to say that mantra to themselves and you're doing that breathing activity with them in each pose and then you get them in the relaxation pose. So if, if you want to start off simply, that's probably the most simple way to, to do that. And you can do that in five minutes, 10 minutes if you want to. Mm -hmm. So um, that's probably what I would start doing and, and how to introduce your child to yoga. Excellent. And I guess, you know, we, when you are working with children with special needs and, and the background of trauma, is there a, an easy way for, for parents and caregivers to kind of, I don't want to use the word sell, but, you know, kind of <laughs> get them to think that this would be a really good fun idea? <laughs> you know? Yeah, what, what sort of ways or, yeah, would you recommend that they could use to, to introduce it to them? Let's use that word. <laughs> yeah. So I would use whatever the child is interested in. So a lot of the time I will choose yoga poses and we create animal names. So if they love jungle animals, then we stick with the jungle theme. Or if they love princesses, then we I try and get them to look like a princess in a yoga move or um, <laughs> you know, come up with princess names while we're doing it. So whatever the child is interested in, then bring that into it. And you could think like, children come up with very very bizarre animals and it won't look like it to us but also you're actually encouraging a child's creativeness and imagination yeah. and for children that are constantly in their um, fear response system there is little to no creative um, creativeness or imagination so that's also a very very positive thing for these children so mm -hmm. yeah definitely creativeness um, and, and use props, use things, something that they can feel, look at, smell, um, touch. They really need props. They can't just use their little imagination for things. So I'll use, I'll use feathers and toys and bubbles and a magic wand and blocks and, you know, whatever you can find. Mm. Um, and if you find one of the common things is a, a resistance to this breathing and that's because you know, teachers at school are saying, okay, we're going to do a breathing exercise now. And every all the kids are like, oh, you know, they just, they, it can be, it can be boring. So if your child is resistant to the word yoga or to the word breathing, then don't use the word, mm. try something else. So for a breathing exercise, um, you know, do belly balloon activity instead of a breathing activity. So create a different name for it is what I would suggest if there's resistance but yeah make it fun and with music as well yeah 
I love that. That's great. <laughs> I guess it's it's really and it would help the parents to relax into it as well. You know, you're you're trying to introduce a new routine. It can be, you know, sometimes a bit stressful if, if you're not nailing it the first time as a parent or caregiver. I know I am guilty of that. Um, so yeah, just to, taking that time to and make it fun for yourself. And then as you said, your your children will vibe off of that, won't they? And they'll be like, Oh, this is this is not so bad. Let's go with that. Exactly. Yeah. This is not a classroom session. It's just a play activity. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Well, that's incredible. And just as I mentioned at the start of this conversation, you are such a busy lady. You've got um, so much going on um, for yourself. I just wanted to see if there was anything you wanted to let people know about that's coming up for you uh, this year. This year? Yeah. Uh, well, I've constantly got, uh, constantly got workshops going on. So, if, if you're interested in workshops, then uh, you just need to come over to my Facebook page. So the Kids Yoga Therapy Facebook page. And I always give the information on the upcoming workshops for, um, on there. Mm -hmm. So, and that'll go all year. I will be doing family yoga days as well. So that'll be on my page too. And that's a really amazing opportunity for families to come together. And I choose a topic each time. So for the next one, the topic is going to be anxiety. So all of my activities will be based on me teaching you what you can do with your child at home or out and about if you if anxiety is something that they that they need to work on. So um, that's what, I would, what I'll be doing for the rest of the year. Um, I will also this year is about creating um, creating accessible learning content as well. So everything in my own head, I want to be able to teach to everybody really so and I can only be in so many places at once so I'm going to start creating some online programs for parents to work through so that will be um, this year as well and um, I suppose also my new program of the parent support collective has begun this year as well so that's an opportunity for I guess parents that are really feeling isolated and alone within this journey of parenting a child with complex needs to be able to come together and support each other but be guided by myself as well and you know the goal of that is to really empower these parents who don't really feel that sense of power and control over their lives at the moment um, and, and to find new approaches with their child as well so that that has started this year and is really exciting so for information on that then you just need to email me so jessica at kidsyogatherapy.com.au and, and I'll send you all the information you need so, and you know, there's always other exciting things popping up along the way. So um, nothing, nothing else is confirmed yet, but of course I am working towards some other goals such as research is one of them. But um, yeah, so always something new and exciting to look forward to, but they're the main things for this year. Excellent. No, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing. And it is wonderful that there are so many different ways that people can access that brilliant mind of yours. So thank you for, for letting them know how to do that. Um, that's incredible and thank you so much for, for sharing what you do and, and the journey that, that got you to that point. Um, I really think the work, the work that you're doing now with, with the young children and even the parents is going to have such a flow on effect for, for many years to come. So thank you for sharing that with us today, Jess. Thanks so much, Roxy. I really enjoyed sharing it with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. And for those of you watching and listening at home, um, the Phoenix Phenomenon season is just starting. We've got many more interviews lined up for you. Um, so to make sure you don't miss out on any, make sure you like and subscribe to the video or check out roxannrider.com.au and uh, subscribe to the email service there and we will send them directly to you. So thank you again, Jess. I hope you have an amazing day. You too, you too. Thank you.